What's going on guys, Michael here with Do It Justice and welcome to the next video in our DIY solar power series. I'm so excited to have you here because today we're gonna to be talking about our battery monitor portion of our DIY install. So I'm gonna talk about the specific battery monitor that I purchased, why I purchased that particular one, and also how happy I've been over the last two years of using it. Now, I'm also gonna talk about how I tied that battery monitor into our system so that it's able to read and register what's coming into and out of our battery bank. So very important stuff today, stick around for that. Before I jump right into today's topic, I wanted to welcome all you new viewers out there. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. There's also a bell icon right next to that so you guys can stay notified and up to date on all the videos we post here on YouTube on a weekly basis. Also keep in mind, Jenny and I are active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So definitely go over there and check it out. All the links will be in the video description below. So go check us out over there and give us a follow because we use those platforms to communicate with you guys outside of this beautiful platform called YouTube. Awesome, now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna show you exactly what monitor I bought. So this is the Bogart Engineering Trimetric TM2030RV. I know that's a mouthful, but I will have a link for it in the video description below. This thing has been an awesome monitor over the last two plus years that I've had it. I have to say, it's just extremely handy to have around. So some of my favorite features about it is it allows me to remind myself to equalize my batteries. So on a monthly basis, it will flash and say, hey, you need to equalize your batteries because as you guys know, I have flooded lead acid batteries below that do need to be maintained. Another feature that it has is it's able to uh, detect when the battery haven't been charged up to full capacity. Now what I mean by that is over the course of maybe three or four days of cloudy days, let's say your batteries don't get charged fully up to 100%, it's gonna flash and remind you that hey, for the best health of your batteries, it's good to go ahead and charge that up to full capacity. So that's really handy to have around. But my three favorite features about this battery monitors, it allows you to monitor the volts, the amps going into and out of, and it also uh, gives you a percentage um, calculation of what the battery bank is at. So it's a really easy reference point to say, hey, I'm at 90% of my battery bank. And as you guys know, the flooded lead acid batteries that I have only have a 50% capacity of usable energy. So that's really handy to have around with this particular battery monitor. When it comes to actually tying this battery monitor into our solar system, uh, I needed to buy one extra piece of equipment. It's called a shunt, and I have a 500 amp shunt that's in my battery bank compartment down below. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys outside and show you guys that shunt and explain to you guys what it's used for and how it um, ties everything together so that this battery monitor can show me the numbers that it actually does. Okay, so we're here uh, at the battery bank where our battery bank is located in the sub bay, a place that is familiar to all you guys who have been following along with this series. But I've mentioned the shunt before, uh, but I haven't been able to really describe it to you because I haven't found a video that was good for it. But today's video is specifically for that. So I wanted to talk to you guys about what the shunt is actually meant for. So uh, the battery monitor can't actually um, read anything without giving it, getting a signal delivered to it. And that's basically what the shunt is designed for. So uh, you can kind of think of it as a translator. What it does is it monitors all the current going into and out of the battery bank and then it translates that into a voltage reading that that battery monitor that can then use to display the the those features that I was showing you earlier now there is some other stuff that the particular device does itself to do some calculations and show you guys show us percentages and stuff like that but the basic thing you need to remember is that shunt is the translator and it translates that current into something uh, that that battery monitor can actually read so now that you guys understand that i'm going to go ahead and talk about how i have it all wired so when it comes to wiring the shunt as you can see one side of the shunt has multiple wires coming into the shunt itself. That's because one side of the shunt is actually supposed to represent the negative post on your battery bank. So this is coming from the inverter, this one's coming from the 
uh, charge controller and these would normally be wired to the negative post on your battery bank. But since I have this shunt in the battery monitor, what I've done is I've created uh, one side of the shunt to kind of replicate that negative side of the battery bank. And then what I have is a single line coming from the shunt, the other side of the shunt, to the negative post of the battery bank. So that basically everything, every amp uh, that comes into or out of the battery bank is being monitored and run through this shunt. Now when it comes to wiring the battery monitor to this whole system, you can see these three small wires here. Uh, again, uh, this is something you'll want to make sure to look at your user's manual for, uh, for whatever specific component that you buy. But I've got the white one the white line tied to the single wire coming out of that shunt. And I've got the black and the red lines going to the negative side that, or the side of the shunt that's representing the negative post of the battery bank. The last wire that I have wired in is this red wire coming from the battery monitor to the positive side of the battery bank. And basically what this is, is it delivers the energy and, uh, so that that battery monitor can actually display those LED lights that I showed you earlier. All right, another thing you're gonna to need to consider when it comes to wiring in a shunt is what size shunt you need to wire in. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying shunt a lot. I'm gonna throw up a shunt calculator <laughs> just so you guys know how many times I like saying shunt. I don't know, it's a fun word to say. Okay, but basically I have a 500 amp shunt that I've used for my system. Now, my user manual gave me two options. I could use a 100 amp or I could use a 500 amp shunt. And the 100 amp shunt was able to handle about 70 amps of continuous current. The 500 amp shunt was able to handle about, I believe it was 420 amps. So significant difference between those two. Uh, but what you need to do is consider how many amps are going into and out of your battery bank to properly size your shunt. So what I needed to do was see how many amps were actually going into my battery bank. And to do that, I went to my charge controller that sits inside this bay. Now, I know you guys have already seen this in a previous video but I do have a 60 amp charge controller going into my batteries so worst case scenario or I guess best case scenario <laughs> I'm gonna be delivering about 60 amps of current to the battery bank now in real world conditions that I'm not gonna get anywhere near that it's more like a little over half that um, but just so you know this has the capability of delivering up to 60 amps to my battery bank so 60 amps is within that 70 amp threshold of the 100 amp shunt. I hope this isn't getting confusing. So on the input side, that 100 amp shunt should theoretically work. But on the output side is kind of where it gets a little tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back inside the RV to talk to you guys about the inverter or where I draw power out of the battery bank. Okay, so this is my 2500 watt inverter and when you're trying to calculate the amount of current that can be drawn out of the batteries this 2500 watts is about the maximum that i can draw out of the batteries and also there's some extra stuff like our dc lights and fans and pumps and stuff like that so theoretically it could actually be more than just this 2500 watts but for the sake of ease i'm going to go ahead and just use this as a base um, number so that we can calculate the amount of amps that we can potentially draw out of the battery bank so if i'm trying to find the amps and i know the watts um, I, and I know the voltage, which is 12 volts for our battery bank, what I need to do is I need to take this 2,500 watts and divide that by 12 volts because volts times amps equals watts. If you do the math and you divide your uh, the wattage of your inverter divided by 12 volts uh, for the 12 volt system that you're gonna be drawing out of, that gives you a little over 200 amps uh, of draw that's going to be coming off of the battery bank. Like I said, I do have my DC lights, pumps, and fans and stuff like that wired to my battery bank as well. So that's, that's being drawn out of that battery bank as well. But um, for, um, for the purpose of sizing our shunt 
200 plus amps is well under the 420 amp threshold of the 500 amp shunt. So when you're trying to calculate out what size shunt you need, I hope this kind of helps you uh, to do that. You have to calculate uh, what's coming into and out of the battery bank. So you make sure you get a properly sized shunt so you can read everything that you need to read. Now, again, I will be going into this inverter uh, into a little, a little bit more detail in my next video, uh, but that gives you an idea of how to size the shunt and how to wire this whole battery monitor together. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today. I gave you a basic overview of what battery monitor I have, how I wired it all together using that 500 amp shunt so that I can read everything and monitor everything while we're out here boondocking off grid in our class C RV. So thank you again so much for watching. If you did like this video, definitely hit that like button down below, smash it once, but don't smash it twice because it'll go away. And um, also leave a comment down below because I'd love to answer any questions or comments that you have. Uh, I like communicating with you guys down there. So also don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more weekly videos. And as always guys, I will see you on the next video.